Hello everyone, I am Sepide, a PhD student at the University of Lugano. I'm going to talk about our recent work, Farkash based tree interpolation, which is a joint work has been done in University of Lugano in collaboration with Florida State University. Let's start with a quick overview of the state of the art. There are lots of binary interpolation algorithms for linear arithmetic over reals. And they have been widely used as a means of over approximations, or even they could affect the convergence of program verifications. On the other hand, uh, applications requiring the tree interpolation property have little choice for LRA interpolation algorithms. Therefore, it could limit their scalability or soundness. For instance, incremental verification of program revisions or solving non-recursive horn clauses. For scalability reason, combining propositional proof-based interpolation algorithms with LRA interpolation algorithm comes in very handy as an over-approximation of bit vectors in uh, software model checking. In this uh, work, the goal is to investigate binary interpolation algorithm in the context of LRA and propositional to study whether they guarantee to interpolation property or not. Our context is satisfiability modulo theories on quantifier free formulas in the theory of linear real arithmetic. Uh, let's look at a simple example illustrating over approximation in LRA. Consider two sets of linear inequalities. So one possible over approximation of this pink area could be this uh, green half plane. And obviously there could be several of such over approximations. The question is how to end up with such over approximations. We are using Craig interpolation, which is also known as binary interpolations. The idea is if you have a mutually unsatisfiable formula A and B, the interpolant is the third formula I such that it over approximates fragment A, but it is unsatisfiable with formula B. After proof of unsatisfiability, using different binary interpolation algorithm, we can compute different interpolants. So one easy way would be to use the dual interpolant concept. So the idea is if I is interpolant for A with B, then the negation of I is an also interpolant for B with A. And there are logical relations between the primal interpolant and its dual. Now let's look at Turing interpolation property. I'm going to use TIP for short. The TIP relates interpolants computed by multiple binary interpolation problems over the single proof. Just as a heads up that this presentation only considers uh, three partitions, but in the paper, we uh, consider any arbitrary partitions. The definition is having A and B and C as an unsatisfiable formula, and IA, IB, and IAB as a binary interpolants for the following interpolation problems. The tuple, we say that have strong TIP if the condition IA and IB implies IAB, and the tuple will have weak TIP if it satisfies IA together with the original B formula that implies IAB. Don't worry if it's not um, clear, I'm going to elaborate it with an example. As an example, to show the usefulness of the tree interpolation property, I'm going to show that a function called tree of a program, function C calls function A and B, and the formula representing this program will be like this. And if it turns out to be unset, it means the program is safe. So we can compute interpolants. And each interpolant can be seen as an over approximation of the behavior of the function. 
So here, IABC will be the overapproximation of function C, which is unsatisfiable with the rest of the program, and it contains the function body C together with the subtree of the C. Now, suppose a new version of program arrives, which a prime and b prime is a changed form of a and b, right? Instead of reconstructing the whole formula again and redoing the verification from scratch, so the alternative way will be to reuse the interpolants that have been already generated from the first version. So suppose the behavior of a prime is still contained in the previously obtained summary IA, and so do for B prime. But uh, this is not enough to conclude that the second version is safe. So there must be some relation among interpolant that guarantee the soundness. The TIP says that the interpolant of A and the interpolant of B together with the body of C need to imply the interpolants of their colors. And with this, we can conclude that the second version is safe without computing the, the full formula of the program. In this talk, we are going to look into five interpolation algorithms for computing LRA interpolants based on Farkash lemma. And then we will investigate which of them meet the true interpolation property and which of them do not. If they guarantee TIP, we will provide a general proof. Otherwise, we try to find some constraints to make them guarantee the TIP. I will tell you the result of our observation up front. So the Farkash interpolant uh, satisfy the TIP, but the dual variants and also the flexible variants of Farkash do not. We also will show that the decomposing Farkash interpolant can guarantee TIP using some conditions. Uh, let's understand how Farkash coefficients could be useful. Consider this um, as an unsatisfiable conjunction of linear inequalities. For unsatisfiable system, always there exist Farkash coefficients such that the weighted sum of the inequalities given by Farkash coefficients leads to a contradictory inequality. Now, uh, given this system and the interpolation problem, for instance, A and B with C, I'm going to show how to compute interpolant in each interpolation algorithms one by one. First, Farkash interpolant. This is one way to compute an interpolant in linear arithmetic used in many modern SMT solvers that relies on Farkash lemma. So Farkash interpolant, after partitioning, is a weighted sum of A and B. And the resultant interpolant will be x2 plus x3 less than equal 0. And immediately we can also compute the dual Farkash interpolant by negating the partitioning. And I'm going to also quickly um, mention the third algorithm that uh, is called uh, flexible Farkash interpolant, which computes an infinitely many interpolant between Farkash and dual Farkash interpolant with flexible strengths. The fourth binary interpolation algorithm that has been introduced recently, which is called decomposing Farkash interpolant, and it has been shown to be very useful. This approach produces an interpolant that is a conjunction of possibly more than one component of Farkash interpolant. For instance, here, with decomposing the Farkash uh, coefficients vector into two subvectors, um, uh, such that these subvectors should be non negative and also eliminate the local variable in the weighted sum in the resulting interpolant. Uh, so how it's done, so with decomposing the, the vectors, we can immediately get the 
and the conjunctive interpolants x2 less than equal 0 conjoined with x3 less than equal to 0. And this is pretty nice and uh, it's stronger than the other versions. Uh, in the beginning of my talk, I mentioned that combining a propositional proof-based interpolation algorithm with LRA is useful in software model checking, but this is a non-trivial combination because if we don't do it carefully, the implementation and also proof can go wrong. Uh, I'm going to illustrate this problem with an example, and then I'll propose a solution. Here is a CNF formula. And here is the theory clause which is required for the refutation of this CNF formula, as shown here. You know that the interpolation techniques follow some recursive algorithms, which is initially set uh, partial interpolants for some nodes in the refutation tree. And then, based on the proof structure, we draw a final interpolation for the um, formula, which is the partial interpolant of the uh, overall conclusion. Consider formula phi, which is partitioned into A, B, C. Before we compute an interpolant uh, for three binary partitioning of the theory clause, we must label the atoms of theory clause according to the partitions of the CNF formula. So the first two atoms in a theory clause are pretty clear and we know that uh, they are labeled as A and B. But for the last atom there is a freedom how to label that. For example, if we label A less than or equal to C as B for the first interpolation problem, the resulting Farkash interpolant would be A less than or equal to B. Now, if we change the label and put it in A, the resulting interpolant for theory clause will be B less than or equal to C and false. And clearly, using this interpolants would violate the strong TIP. So what happened here? The strong TIP was not guaranteed when we kept changing the labels of the, uh, the atom that was uh, shared between different binary interpolation problems. Now let's see the solution, which is called proper labeling for determining the partitioning of theory clause. The idea is before we start computing interpolants for interpolation problem, we fix the partitioning of the theory clause, then we see the TIP will hold. So the refutation should be properly labeled during this uh, work to achieve our goal. Now let's see the first result we stated in the paper. I don't expect you to read this. Uh, here I will summarize our first result. The result is a strong and weak TIP in Farkash interpolation algorithm is always guaranteed for an any arbitrary number of partitions. As a second set of our contribution, we reported also that the dual and flexible variant of Farkash algorithm do not satisfy TIP, neither weak nor strong. I encourage you to check the, the concrete counterexample we provided in the paper, but unfortunately I don't have time to go to the detail. Now let's move to the decomposing Farkash interpolation algorithm. In general, TIP is not guaranteed in the decomposed interpolant, but we can define some constraint on the decomposition such that it could guarantee the TIP. We define it as a monotonicity condition. The idea is the inequalities resulting from the supersystems decomposition must be logically covered by the inequalities of the subsystems decomposition. And how we can achieve this monotonic decomposition? The idea is gradual decomposition. So the gradual decomposition is a method to restrict the possible decomposition used by the decomposing Farkash algorithm. The idea is to first decompose the larger subsystem and then instead of computing independent decomposition for its subsystem, we decompose it only the elements of the decomposition of the larger system. 
and therefore we could ensure the requirement of three interpolant. Let's compare the gradual decomposition shown on the left and the independent decomposition shown on the right. Here is a tree structure with three partitions x, y, z. And you see the vector of Farkash coefficients in the root shown with bold f. And there are capital D's shows possible decomposition of the vector of Farkash coefficients for each binary interpolation problems which is written in pink in the top of the page. And uh, the solid gray arrow with label XY shows the restriction to the subsystem XY and the dashed arrow shows the decomposition. The decomposition corresponding to nodes Z and Y shown with D0 and D3 are the same in both cases. The differences appears when computing the decomposition corresponding to node X. On the left, gradual decomposition ensures that the decomposition D1 agrees with D3 by trying to decompose each elements of D3 separately. On the right, the decomposition of node X is computed independently, such that we decompose directly Fx without involving D3. So the decomposition corresponding to node child X doesn't care what's ha um, happening on its parent. And this is the source of problem. So we saw that with independent decomposition, we violate the monotonicity condition and the decomposition D2 doesn't agree with D3. But with gradual decomposition, TIP will be guaranteed in decomposing Farkash algorithm. Uh, for evaluation, we conducted an experiment to compare Farkash tree interpolation against uh, decomposed Farkash tree interpolation. Uh, on the left figure, we compared the number of top-level uh, conjuncts in Farkash and decomposed Farkash. The result is on 91% of the benchmarks, decomposed interpolants have more conjuncts. This is pretty nice because the number of top-level conjuncts could be a measure of flexibility on the interpolants. On the right figure, we compared the number of unique LRA atoms. And the result is on 63% of benchmarks, Farkash interpolants have fewer atoms. And this is also nice indicating the complexity of the interpolant. So uh, Farkash interpolant would have smaller Boolean search space. And the result is uh, the algorithms are substantially different in practice and they are complementary. Uh, as a related work, um, there are a couple of uh, lists here and the applications. And I'm going to conclude with this slide that in this work, we investigated the necessary conditions for the tree interpolation property for five state-of-the-art LRA interpolation algorithms. And uh, our result was summarized here. And we also lifted the recently introduced approach producing conjunctive LRA interpolants to tree interpolation by introducing gradual decomposition. And this work, we believe that would open the possibility of using different proof-based interpolation portfolios in applications that require tree interpolation. I, in the end, encourage you to check our website, the application that we built using the tree interpolation, which is called Approver, and we will be happy to take any feedback by email. Thanks.